Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many of TrueNet, and welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, where last time we did some good work with the Empire, in particular, the First Crusade began. We managed to put together a pretty damn strong army, I would say, some of my own decent solid troops, which I'm no longer paying for, they're all working for free, because we promised them they're going to get into heaven, which is marvellously good news. So, they're all working for free right now, we picked up a good bunch of flipping mercenaries to go with them as well, and yes indeed, they can now start making their way south because they are in a boat, which is very, very nice indeed. Together, of course, with Sven of Milton Keynes, he is going to hop in the boat with Admiral John. He can actually go and take Antwerp, where Toke is already making some very, very good money. Yeah, everything's looking pretty damn solid. But probably the most interesting thing that's actually happened is the alliances of Europe have started to emerge. Because this is kind of how diplomacy in this game works. Like, you know, everyone just goes and grabs the rebel territories, which is fine. So some of those have been... You still haven't taken Bordeaux. France, are you feeling all right? Because I feel like someone should have flipping taken Bordeaux by now, right? But basically, everyone just goes and takes the rebel settlements. Once the rebel settlements have been taken, then everyone starts forming alliances. Then once everyone's all allied up, then potentially some big European wars break out. But arguably, the big wars in the expansion zones aren't really in Europe. Instead, because the Pope gets annoyed by that sort of stuff, the expansion's down here in the Holy Land. And that's where we're going right now. So, let's get our boats moving. Now, Interesting thing, of course, because I'm a Northern European power, basically I don't actually have any ports in the Mediterranean. So I've said to hire these two guys right here. These are just some mercenary galleys. Now, they're all right, but the problem is Egypt is obviously a Mediterranean power that's had ports for ages. And that means there's probably an excellent chance that they have got a much stronger navy. And of course, don't forget, there's pirates. Pirates can be quite strong in this game. So basically, in my experience, you don't really just want to kind of like set off over the sea because there's too much of a chance that your fleet will get knocked back. And as I've discussed previously, if a crusading army doesn't make sufficient progress per turn towards its destination, it'll get bored and wander off and basically be unimpressed with you. So like, if I go here, get attacked by pirates and get driven back to here, the game will start getting really snippy because I've just moved further away from the Holy Land. So in my experience, the best way to do this is basically to just do little short hops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this boat and I'm basically going to take it around here and then I'm actually going to drop my troops actually onto the land. At the beginning of next turn, I will reboard them and we'll continue there. Uh, what are you? You are, you're Venetian. That's fine. Venetians are not going to attack me right now. So we've got this navy right here. So we'll just simply have that right there. And then next turn, Prince Charles will get back in the boat and then it will continue on its way. And basically we'll just kind of go hop, 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 possibly hopping down here, and then kind of like around here to Cairo, that sort of a way, because it's kind of, it's just too dangerous to do otherwise. But that should still be much faster progress than I would have got on foot, so that's fine. Anything new showing up here, by the way? We've got, ah, we've got Balkan archers, but those are basic archers, so we don't need to worry about them. In fact, they're kind of terrible. Defense 1, missile attack 5. Yeah, that's, that's really damn bad. Yeah, we've got new mercenaries here, but honestly, they're not that great. And we're back into pilgrims, not religious zealots. So those are kind of terrible. I don't need any more of them. I might pick up some more religious zealots because they're so cheap, but just quite fun if I happen to see any. So what I've decided is, for now, I'm not going to run straight into an alliance with the Holy Roman Empire. Because if it comes to war with me and the Holy Roman Empire, then because my relationship with Poland is good, they should side with me. So that should be fine. So I'm not going to rush into that. We'll take things slow, but potentially, given time, I might decide it is indeed a good idea to actually yeah, be friends with the Holy Roman Empire. Because then, if I can just get my relationship with these guys to be really, really strong indeed, then that actually basically means, yeah, I've got a secured eastern flank, secured southern flank, and that means I can expand over in this direction, take Antwerp and Bruges a lot more easily without having to worry too much about any, well... I might worry about France attacking me, but if France attacks me, then potentially I've got some nice, powerful friends to help me out. So I just basically need to go and tell my friends, and then me and my mates will come over and sort France out. So, that could theoretically work. Very, very nicely indeed, actually, yes. Speaking of which, uh, yep, yeah, so Sven of Milton Keynes uh, into the fleet, and then you... Not really going to make much progress this turn, but never mind. I'm going to do exactly the same trick here as I'm doing uh, elsewhere, because I'm a bit worried by the possibility of, uh, yeah, pirates. Because I know there are, actually, I know that there are pirates, because they're right flipping there. And unfortunately, my poor little mercenary cog is probably about to be destroyed. In fact, it's probably, how expensive is it? Cost a hundred. It's not that expensive. The problem is I've got no port to store it in. I should probably build a port just at Hamburg, purely for the sake of having somewhere where I can kind of throw my ships so they're safe. Because there's a strong Polish navy somewhere over here that can probably take care of these pirates. So I should probably actually flee towards 
them. Because if he decides to come in this direction, hopefully me and the Polish can take them out together. Or rather, the Polish can do it for me and I can stand nearby and everything will be fine. Still, bunch of good stuff finishing up right now. Farming upgrades finishing up. Mines finishing up. Yeah. Very, very soon indeed, everything is going to be looking very, very good for us. Over here in Helsinki. Go on then, have yourself a mustering hall. Why not, eh? Don't say I never treat you to anything nice. I think that's all I can do this turn. Yeah, next turn we should be able to get on top of Antwerp and then we'll see just how bad it is. Because I seem to recall, yeah, some of the Flemish rebels in this sort of area, they are very, very dangerous because they actually have like the earliest like pikemen you'll see in the game. And those guys, if they form up their nasty little spear wall thing, that can hurt, especially in tight city streets. Right, so let's see what happens now. French princess just bumming around. That's probably Constance. That's um the nicest princess in the game. They start off with the best princess. She starts off 5 out of 10 before she's got any diplomatic perks. So you can get her up to 8 out of 10 pretty easily. So therefore, she can basically have her pick of like generals in the entire empire. So I'm kind of glad she's down there. Because otherwise, she could come over to my empire and seduce someone if she wanted to. But honestly... I'm not sure there's anyone worth seducing. Well, you know what? Steve Stenger, he is a damn good guy. Anyone would be honoured to marry Steve Stenger, but he's kind of busy on Crusade right now, so she can't get to him, which is nice. Also, can't help but notice that uh, that alliance that just formed between the Imperials and the Polish, <laughs> I'm not convinced it's going to last that long, given the Imperials have just invaded Prague. Oh, I just saw the Polish fleet fling themselves in there. That's good. Now, come on, rebels. At this point, the Polish fleet is actually closer to the rebels, so come on, yep, and the Poles just got defeated. That's a concern, because that was pretty much my one flipping ho- <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, that's a concern. Uh, how much did you win by? Oh, you've still got every single one of your ships. Oh, the Polish Navy's in trouble. Right, I'm just gonna go over here, and I'm just gonna hope they don't see me, and everything will be fine. Right, another 3,000 florins. I was kind of hoping the, uh, I think the economy would jump a bit more than that, to be honest, given I do actually have mines going right now. Uh, not over here, sorry, the mines are over there. Do I need a church? I uh, Yes, I do need a church here. The Pope has asked me for a church. Do what the Pope says. Keep the Pope happy. That is always a good idea. It's a good investment to keep the Pope happy, damn it. Now, back over with Admiral John here, and if I'm lucky, I might just be able to actually get Antwerp under siege immediately. Uh, no. No, tragedy not. I could get it under siege with Sven of Milton Keynes, but he wouldn't be able to be joined by his army because the rest of his army can't move at all. Fine, that'll just have to be next turn. Still, this does let me get close. How on earth can I possibly not see right now? Well, get get close to Bruges at least so we can have a look see what's going on there. Yeah, you see, Flemish pikemen. These guys are tough and dangerous. Can't see their stats yet, but their stats are good enough. Plus, they can form a spear wall. Spear walls are, yeah, tough. But they're not effective against armor, actually. Um, there's various different types of, like, these are sort of, like, pseudo-phalanx things. This game tried, like, various different variations of phalanxes. Like, there's people who are holding pikes. There's people who are holding, like, spears. There's people who are holding weird things I can't remember the name of. And some of them have bonuses versus cavalry. And some of them have bonuses versus armor, but not cavalry. And, yeah, there's, there's a couple of different varieties of them. But uh, they are dangerous when they form their phalanx. Not as bad as phalanxes in Rome Total War. But then phalanxes in Rome Total War were kind of weird and arguably maybe even a little bit kind of brokenly too strong. So, uh, you know what? Bit of this, bit of that. It's fine. We'll be able to take care of it. We've got enough flipping heavy infantry that can actually hack its way through some kind of proper heavy armor. Thanks to the fact, yeah, everything I've got is effective against armor. We'll be fine. And though they are a little bit surprisingly expensive, because, yeah, it costs a hundred a turn to maintain a priest, I should probably get a priest going on up here in Helsinki just to slowly start converting it to Catholicism. So I'm going to spend 200 on that right now. Oslo's finished its mine, so I could give them... Hmm, you know what, let's put the tax rate up there, happy now. I could give them a church, but the Pope hasn't asked for it, and generally, like, if there's a town where you're not planning to, like, invest heavily in the kind of church stuff, or you don't need to train priests, don't really bother building churches, assuming you haven't got religious unhappiness, which I, well, I've got a little bit here. A little bit here. I think it's fine for now. Like, I'd rather not bother. I'd rather, like, you know, work on the economy instead. So, uh, probably either I could just slightly boost that, boost that by a tiny, pathetically small amount, uh, or, well, that would actually also give me a new merchant. And merchants are kind of fun. Now, let's get communal farming up. Just keep that growth rate ticking up here. 
The thing about expanding over in this direction, which is nice, is both of these are large towns. Like, up here, we've got a lot of, like, basic towns. We need a lot of, like, infrastructure building in them first. And the same over here in Stettin. That's still just a basic town and will be for some time. But over here, we've got two large towns with some, I think, decent populations already. I can't see the population right now because I don't have a spy nearby. But, yeah, this is all right. And, well... I've been thinking, this is stupid by the way, or rather, it's not as stupid as it sounds. I'm thinking if I can get hold of Bruges, I might convert it into a castle. Now that probably sounds really, really stupid because it's clearly supposed to be an economic settlement. It's got really good, valuable trade resources. It's by the sea. It's, you know, could very clearly trade really easily with like, you know, this area over here by sea or with all of England and with Scotland up there. And, you know, it's also got good land routes, some really prosperous kind of French territories around here. But the thing is, until it's up to a minor city, until you've invested heavily in its trade infrastructure, trade's not going to take off anyway. So really, you're making your money primarily from taxes and farming for the time being. Now, a castle can still make really good money from farming and can still make decent-ish money from taxes. So potentially having just like a little bit of the edge of the empire that's more castly up here, just so, yeah, well, um, I've already got two castles here. And a castle up here. Do I want four castles in the Empire? It might just be useful for keeping Antwerp safe. It might be useful. Okay, maybe I'll look at the population and make a decision on that. Because, like, if the population here is, like, 4,500, that's so close to a minor city, it would be a waste to convert it back and forth. But we'll have to see. Now, back down here with the Crusading forces. You better be... Yep, I am indeed allowed to get back in my boat now. So I get in my boat, and now you can see I can go a really, really healthy long distance today. So now what I probably want to do is I want to say I'm going to go over here and I could have gone further but I was pushed into kind of further away from the shore because you can travel faster and further if you're by the shore. Yep, I managed to get myself ashore there. Lovely. Get my boats a little bit more in this direction and now next turn I'll be ready to basically start setting off again straight away. Yeah, if you stick right close to the shore you can see you can travel much further. So this boat pushed me out a little bit far. So as a result, yeah, the most difficult bit's probably going to be next turn I'll probably look to like get to the south coast of Crete. If I can, and then I'll use that to jump down to Africa, and then I'm only a few turns away from reaching Cairo. And at this point, obviously, we've got no more kind of crusading, just kind of like, you know, zealots or whatever to pick up, because now we're outside of Catholic territory. We're into Byzantine territory. So around here, I'm assuming there's... Actually, there's still 40% Catholicism, but yeah, we are primarily Orthodox at this point. So unsurprisingly, there's no actual kind of Catholic zealots ready to jump. Well, actually, I suppose, technically, if this is like areas a bit Catholic, but, you know, there's a lot of religious tension here, and it's a bit disputed which is the primary religion. Actually, it would make sense if there were people ready to jump on a crusade, because there's probably a few extremists around here, but there aren't, actually. There's just some basic mercenaries, so I won't bother with them. Oh, yeah, look at all that farming and that mining coming in. That's good. Get that money, get that growth. And you know what? As I don't have anything, like, huge addition to build, I will actually build a port at this point. Just so I've got somewhere to keep my ship safe just in case the pirates show up again. I can just basically hide in my port and cower while they go off and deal with someone else. But to be honest, I think like, uh, yeah, the problem in, well, this happened in Rome 1 as well. But like in Rome 1, you had so much money, you could eventually just build a massive fleet and deal with it yourself. But uh, yeah, in Medieval 2, because there's just kind of, you know, so little money floating around and generally everyone's floating very little money. No one really builds up a massive fleet. Like, the Venetians kind of do a little bit more than the others, but, like, for the most part, especially, like, you know, outside of the Mediterranean, out here, no one really bothers building up a proper fleet. So, basically, the consensus how to deal with pirates is, can't someone else do it? Everyone just hides their fleet. Tiny fleets get torn apart by pirates. No one really deals with it. If our economy gets going properly... I will build a small anti-pirate fleet. But for the time being, yeah, we can't really do so much of that. You know, I think that massive army that spawned over the Imperial Territory ages ago is actually still there. I think that's the same army that had the Imperial Knights in it. They still haven't managed to deal with it. They should really at some point send an army to go and take care of that, but they just flipping haven't. Still, I think that's all we can do for now. And yep, our house is getting very close to a city. Oh, that's exciting. Our first minor city in the Empire. I love it. Oh, and I think I forgot to flipping do the Ingrid thing. Oops. Sorry, Ingrid. We will get you a husband next turn, I promise. And we've got... Ooh. No, I think the Imperials are hopefully just marching straight through Prague to get to Vienna. They're basically just taking a shortcut through Polish territory. So I really hope they do actually have military access. Otherwise, that's very rude of them. And another mission's being completed. I believe that was indeed... Yep, a church at Stockholm. Lovely. I've done a few missions for the Pope recently. He should be... He's happy enough with me, but... Yeah, I'm almost surprised to be only 6 out of 10, to be honest. I would have thought I was high. I mean, I'm literally the only person who's bothering with the Crusade. No one else bothered turning up. 
which is embarrassing for the Pope. If you call a crusade and no one actually goes and does it. Helsinki has its priest. Marvellous. Yep, just that small church over in Stockholm. Lovely. And yep, we're looking good right now. Divine connection, but honestly, nothing major here. May as well just have him. No, no, you step outside. Step outside, you. There you go. Lovely. Sarah is right now only 12% Catholic. It will very slowly go Catholic, just because there's nothing else to really kind of uh, impact it right now. Because there's no Orthodox priests here. And uh, yeah, there's no other churches or anything. So as a result, it will just very, very slowly convert to Catholicism, which is nice. So first things first, Sven of Milton Keynes, you are attacking Antwerp, of course. Large town, we know we've actually got some proper stuff here. Now, I've been thinking, of course, people went out in the comments, like, I always think about wall fighting as essential, but like, technically in Medieval 2, people have made a good point in the comments, which is just because wall fighting is so brutal and difficult to do, there's a very good argument for simply just basically rushing gates, a couple of different gates, and just like one of them will go through, then just basically bomb rush your entire army straight up to the plaza, and fight there and basically just say, screw the walls, I don't care about the walls. You'll take some knocks, but you'll probably take less damage than you would have done from slowly grinding your way through the enemy on the walls and being hit by the towers all of that time. So there is absolutely a good point for saying, you know what, screw it, we'll just go with the flipping rams. So just in case that does turn out to be the best option, because right now I can't really afford to do much in the way of siege towers, I'm going to build a whole bunch of ladders, yeah, four ladders, two rams, that'll be fine. Now, can I see what's... Yes, I can indeed see what's going on a bit better now, which is... Oh, yeah. You can see here, armoured sergeants, very, very, very tough spearmen, some actual mailed knights, crossbowmen, not long-range crossbowmen, but they'll still hit pretty bloody hard, and Flemish pikemen. This town is independent and really, really wants to flipping stay independent, but as it's a large town, if need be, I could starve them out. It takes six turns. I don't really want to wait that long, to be honest. Um... Assuming some, yeah, there's loads of mercenaries floating around here. If I feel like I need more support, I could just buy some extra support. But, yeah, I'd say potentially smashing the gate and then just trying to bum rush the plaza. That could actually work pretty nicely. So we might have to see if I can make that work. Now just keep throwing down all of those farming upgrades. Farming upgrades, good. Over here in Helsinki as well. This tiny force here is probably flipping terrified. This Russian army is just hanging outside and has been for flipping years. It just kind of sits here waiting. And no one knows what they want. It's all a little bit on the creepy side. Meanwhile, don't forget, I've got this flipping diplomat here who probably ought to be going on his way. I think he got interrupted at some point and kind of forgot his journey. So you, just keep heading in this direction. Find yourself some Ottomans sooner or later. The Ottomans aren't attacking anything right now, are they? No, doesn't look like it, which is nice. I would like the Byzantines to actually take the war to the flipping Ottomans and actually take some territory off them. That'd be fun. You can definitely see there's, yeah, there's definitely something. Hang on, where is it? I can see it. Yeah, there we are. I can see a little bit of stuff going on here. I just, I don't know where the city is exactly. I can't remember where the cities in the Near East are in Medieval 2. So, it's fine. I'll get some map information. We'll figure it out. Meanwhile, Crusading Force, back on the boats with you. And yes, indeed, I was like, ah. This is risky. I don't think I can quite get my men ashore this turn. So, if I was to go, if I was to, yeah, disembark right here. That would be, it's a shame, I, I, ugh. I'll make better progress if I go here, but then I'm in the open ocean with two boats, and I'd be nervous about that, so I'll have a think about that, I may choose to do that, I may choose to just be a coward and go to Greece. Ah, but, Ingrid, your flipping big day is here, your big day is right flipping here, Ingrid, oh. 58% chance, come on Ingrid, this is a better than average chance, marry the man, marry Bolslaw her. Surely you have always wanted to marry Bolslaw Herman. Marry him. Come on. Do your little poncy bow. That's right. Come on. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Bolslaw Herman, part of my faction now. Together with... Oh, he's picked up a biographer and an architect. Plus one authority. And... Oh, wow. Okay. You're good. I like you. And there's just a flipping... There's just some Polish nobles. Guys, we need to we need to get out of here. <laughs> we need to get out of here right now because there's just flipping Polish nobles like standing right there. And now I'm just stuck here. I can't move on. <laughs> if they attack me right now, then I'm going to need the Polish help, my old friends, before I got married. So hopefully they don't, you know, resent me for getting... You know what? There's dismounted Polish nobles here. We've got Polish nobles on horseback. They've got archers. We've got support. Alright, if they decide to attack me right now because I look vulnerable, then don't worry. To the bare minimum, this is actually going to be like my first big moment fighting alongside the Poles, which will be beautiful. 
There's more over here as well. Where have these bloody rebels come from all of a sudden? You know what? The only dangerous thing here is the armoured sergeants, uh, 7 and 14. So what I'm probably going to do as a result is... Uh, yeah, I can probably actually send... Mm, that might not be enough. I'm going to send these forces over here. They're going to join up with whatever's in Stettin. You know what? Just send uh, one unit of Viking Raiders up to join up with them. And then, yeah, that army can take out these guys. And hopefully we'll get a general out of that. That would be fun. And there we are, we get the little marriage celebrations there. Ingrid has become Ingrid Herman because she has married the love of her life, Boleslaw Herman. The greatest named man in the world. Marvellous. Also, I'm not sure where she's getting married because there is literally not a church as big as that in the world. There just isn't. Like, the biggest church in the world. Like, someone might have built an abbey, but, like, actually, I'm pretty sure the biggest Catholic church in the world right now is probably just a normal-sized church. So, there is definitely not a religious Catholic building that big anywhere. But there we are. It's nice to see her getting married. Good old Ingrid. She's waited a long time for this. She has literally travelled on foot, down through Europe, down to Italy, back up through flipping Poland, through rebel settlements, and she's finally found the man of her dreams. So, is that not wonderful that they are finally married? I mean, she actually does have a secret lover as part of her retinue, so... Actually, I should check that. Does that actually show up? With him at all. Has he picked up a new thing? Wife is fair. You see, because she was 5 out of 7, which is apparently good enough. When one's wife is fair, so is time at home. Increases the chance of... Oh, yeah. Bolslaw Herman, he is into Ingrid. Oh, that's lovely. That's really flipping nice. So, yes, because he's got royal ties, he's married to a princess. Therefore, he gets plus 3 loyalty. Wife is fair. Increases the chance of having uh, children. If I'd picked up something like, say, intelligent on the princess, then he would have actually got, like, wife is useful, I think, which actually gives him bonuses to, like, trade and tax income, which is really, really damn cool. But he is ferociously loyal, which is marvellous. He's a damn good commander. We need to work in his chivalry a little bit, but the bigger concern is uh, piety. Right now he's got zero piety. Now, that's not a problem for the time being, but... When it becomes relevant, sooner or later, a new agent type is going to start spawning in the world. When it does, uh, we'll talk about why piety becomes a little bit more important. But yeah, I'm going to keep a little bit of money in the kitty, because our house is about to become a proper city. And that is looking very, very good for me as far as I'm concerned. As for... Ooh. You. Also, I'd miss that your name is Admiral Grimm. Cheer up, you're on a bloody crusade. Okay. We've got 50 boats here. We're quite far away from Egyptian territory. They've no reason to know we're coming. I'm just going to go down here. But I'm going to... I'm ready to just hit backspace if I see anything dangerous. There's no reason to assume there'll be pirates out here in the middle of nowhere. It's fine. Everything's going to be fine. And this means, yeah, next turn we can get down to Africa very, very easily indeed. And hopefully nothing will find me. But this is dangerous. I mean, like, it can actually work in your favour. Like, if pirates come over here, attack me, and then I retreat, like, in this direction towards Africa, it can actually, like, buy you an extra turn. <laughs> it can actually be useful to be attacked, but it's a damn big gamble to take. It's it's a huge gamble. So I think that's all we need to do this turn. Yep, indeed. We'll see whether I feel like attacking Antwerp next turn, but that would be risky. Yes. Right. End the turn, and potentially, we're going to have to fight alongside uh, poor Bolslaw Herman. If he was hoping to go on his honeymoon, no, that's not happening. Potentially, we actually might need to have our first battle alongside our Polish friends. Oh, my spice has been tossed out of Poland. That's probably... Oh, oh, hang on. No, no, I think we do get our first fight against our Polish friends. I think they're about to attack these guys, and I get to help out. We actually get to be flipping involved. Nice, we can fight alongside the Polish. Come on, fight, 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 fight. And assistance requested. abso flipping lootly. I'm willing to assist. And, oh, he's retreated, in fact. Right, that was a bit odd. There was... Yeah, he kind of... Got, wait, what? What are you doing now? What's... What are you doing? What are you all doing? Oh, gosh, darn it. So he's retreated just over the bridge into a position that actually kind of works not to my advantage. Now he's still blocking the flipping bridge. I just want to get Bolslaw back home, damn it. He just wants to go and meet his new father-in-law. Now, new mission from the Blockade Gaza. Chill out, guys. We're even done with the flipping campaign yet, all right? Be careful. Oh, we're strongest. We are the strongest faction in the world. That's partly because our faction is kind of too large, military speaking, because one of it's free, so we can afford a massive one, which is great. Faction announcements we have got ourselves. Oh, Sven. Sven of Milton Keynes, why have you got a pagan magician with you? That's not good. That gives you no advantage. It's just a disadvantage. That's a bad thing. Damn it, Sven. Though we've got a new family member, Eamon. I feel that should be Edmund, but never mind. 
Emund Thodberg. Good name. Everyone's got good names in my faction. Lovely. And our house in the middle of our street, which is now lined with stone walls. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And up to number one militarily. Don't mess with me, all right? Flipping Holy Roman. Well, actually, do mess with me. Because the majority of my strength is actually, like, you know, way over here on a boat. And I didn't get attacked. I didn't get attacked. That's the best thing of all. And now I can make it all the way over here in a single turn, which is beautiful. So let's actually, yeah, let's get the army on land. Just prepare to hit that backspace because I might run into pirates. Because I literally can't see as far as I'm going. Uh, and job done. Now, technically, of course, I'm right now squatting in, uh, yeah, I'm actually squatting in uh, Sicilian territory right now, but that's fine. Just get ourselves right. Actually, no, it's probably best to be as close as possible. Actually, I think that is still one move. Like, a move in any direction is just, like, a, the same number of movement points, so that's fine. So we'll have you there, ready to take you basically over to here. Then we'll drop you off, and then we're getting very, very close by to Cairo now. Nice. And Cairo is looking, presumably, well, it's a bit better defended, like, because, you know, they know we're coming. Basically, they know we're coming, so there's a proper army here. But, if this army keeps standing here, I might be able to use attacking this army to lure this force out of the city and deal with this actually, like, you know, in the open field. Where I would say I've got the advantage right now, though... No more mercenaries on the ground. I may to pick up some new mercenaries around here, just kind of local ones, we shall see. Because, yeah, when I set off, Cairo was badly defended, but they know we're coming. So they've had a chance to kind of dig in a little bit. And they do have proper stone walls. Let me see. But, speaking of proper stone walls, our house, oh yes. Oh, King Canoodle, you must be so flipping proud. This is looking lovely at this point. Now, this is one of the big changes in terms of, like, it's a, it's a small change, really. Like, it feels like a really tiny tech tree change, but it makes a huge difference to the game. So, obviously, back in Rome to the War, you build a port or a shipwright, and you make all the flipping money in the world. No. In this game, uh, ports and shipwrights are actually, while they give you, like, a small increase in tradable goods, really, what you're looking for is the Merchant's Wharf. Basically, that was what actually caused a big increase in money, because that actually gave you a trade fleet, which meant huge amounts of trading started actually taking place. Well, not really that huge, but it's like, even with a Merchant's Wharf, like, you would often find that you weren't, like, getting as big an explosion income as you would have done back in Rome. So let's have a look at this right now. So, trade, yes, yeah, certainly can go up quite significantly from... Apparently, it's already in the process of jumping up. It's not you. Is it because someone else just built a trade fleet? Someone that wants to trade... I don't know. You know what? Because I know it's about to change that anyway, building this thing straight away is not a bad idea. Because I guess, yeah, my trading come up from 653 up to 732. So, you know, a jump of 80 to 100-ish. It's definitely worth having. Like, at this point, trading come starts actually going well. Let's also look at paved roads. That will also have an impact. Actually, mysteriously, it won't. Improved, yeah, it says improved road trade, but actually, in all fairness, the only thing we're trading with by road is Hamburg, so it's not going to make that big a difference. So get rid of that. We've also got, obviously, our first showing of the fair ground, increasing tradable goods, but to be honest, it's that's going to be a modest increase too, and it's quite expensive at 2,400. Now, another thing, I think this is restricted to Denmark and England. The Naval Academy. This is something that's a unique building for those two factions. So basically, I can recruit boats for 10% less, and when we ultimately get to ships with cannons, though no one's invented gunpowder yet, so we don't have that just yet, then basically you'll get an experience bonus for all of those, which is lovely. But yeah, pretty much what I want to do right now is I want to build a merchant's wharf. The only thing I'd vaguely consider right now is actually the Abbey, the third tier of religious building, which you'd probably think that would be a bit confusing because, like, you know, we don't need religion around here. The reason I want that is because abbeys upwards in Medieval 2, if you're playing as Denmark, get a unique unit, Norse War Clerics, which are absolutely flipping hilarious. Basically, they are big mace-armed bishops on horseback. <laughs> Scandinavian bishops are not your average men in the cloth. They are not. So basically, yeah, you get 80 men on horseback, and they're holding these lovely, big, spiky mace things. So they don't actually, like, have lances. They don't get a proper charge. So the charge bonus is relatively small for cavalry. But they hit hard. They've got good, strong defense. They can move around the battlefield. And because they're effective against armor, they're very good for, like, maneuvering around the back of battle lines where two tough units are fighting each other, getting into the back of an enemy that's really tough and just generally well-armored, and then just whacking them with spiky maces in order to whack them down. They do a beautifully good job. They're, like, a bit on the expensive side, but, like, next to, say, just, like, even basic mailed knights... They're not that expensive. 250 ago is not so bad at all. So they're kind of really, really damn good fun. Plus, it's nice because it means, like, at a town, you can train some heavy cavalry that's really, really damn meaty. Because normally most factions, if you want to train cavalry at an actual town rather than at, like, a castle, then basically you need to, like, have a, um, a merchant's guild. 
And we haven't got one of those yet. Those just kind of pop up, like, later in the game. They haven't really started showing up at this point. Though they might actually start showing up now, given I think they start appearing from minor city onward. So that's just what our house has become. So, like, you just get uh, Merchant Militia Cavalry, which are fine, but they're kind of terrible. Like, they're pretty much the worst cavalry in the game in terms of, like, well... That's a lie. They're not the worst cavalry in the game. But they're not very good. They'll do, but they don't have lances. They don't get charge bonuses, really. They don't get, like, bonus versus armor. Like, Norse war clerics, like, as a proper really meaty, nice, situational heavy cavalry you can train in a town, is a really nice thing. Because it means your actual towns can have proper defenses. And that's why, ultimately, like... Later game, it's okay to have, like, overwhelmingly large numbers of cities and very few castles. Because, like, if you've got the right faction, then, like, especially, like, I think France is very good at this too. Like, some of the later militia troops are really, really damn powerful. Spain's pretty good at this, actually. I think, like, Denmark, Spain, and France, like, the three factions that have, like, the best militia armies in many ways. Because, yeah, once you get up to the end of the game, you can get some really, really damn good armies going purely off your militia troops. And then you can have, like, all of the economic powerhouse going on, thanks to the fact you've got ports and the merchant stuff and whatever. But you can also have, like, some really good armies. And, of course, you know, technically, because it's, like, you know, a militia troop you've trained in the town, you're presumably... Actually, I'm not sure about the Norse war clerics. Like, obviously, like, you know, really advanced militia troops you're allowed to have as your garrisons and thus free upkeep. I'm not sure whether you're allowed to count Norse war clerics towards your, um garrison troops and thus have free upkeep on them i'm not sure about that but you know what i think there's only one way to do this right now merchants wharf let's get some flipping trade income in our house is going to have some damn good trade income that's lovely and now, sadly, Stettin and Stockholm are both kind of in the same place. This is one of the things that happened in Medieval 2. There's not really much you can do about it. In Rome Total War, like, um, if a town was, like, say, at, uh, 1,000, like, you know, 1,200 population, then pretty much what you could do is you could just, like, take peasants, you could migrate people to it manually in order to get it up to a large town. Because large town, like Oslo, is when interesting stuff starts happening. There's loads of stuff you can build, so there's plenty to keep you occupied. But, like, a town, it's very easy to run out of good stuff to build. Like, Stockholm, at this point, all I could build would be... Town Watch, well, we're not really training troops here. It's like, you know, it's out of the way. It's safe. Leather Town, I don't need that. I'm not going to be training troops. Or a brothel. Could train a brothel for an extra 5% uh, public happiness, but... Must be a very good brothel, by the way. I mean, if you think about it, like, a brothel having only 5% happiness, those are not very good prostitutes. They're just not doing their job particularly well if you're only 5% happier afterwards. But I guess maybe that's, like, standardised across, like, the entire population. Because only a small proportion of the population goes. The proportion that does is presumably getting a significant happiness boost. But average happiness... I should probably stop trying to analyse the happiness produced by brothels. And go on, then. Let's actually get a proper practice range going on at Hamburg here so we can actually get Norse archers. Because Norse archers are just hilarious. Just because, yeah, there are archers that can do a good job and then if someone just runs up and attacks them they do an even flipping better job because they're that damn strong right so Bolslaw Hermann <laughs> at this point um he can't go this way because there's no way to get home this way I can't send a boat to pick him up because there's pirates in the waters he can't move south because the Polish control groups kind of uh, this area of control blocks him from doing so he can't cross the bridge if he tries to cross the bridge then this guy's now in the flipping way I'm just going to move him out of the way, and we're just going to let the Poles basically go and take care of that guy. And they really hope they do, because if they don't, then potentially he could be in a bit of trouble, right? Because, yeah, if they go and attack him now, I think they have, like, armoured sergeants, and they will win that fight. So I'd actually have to retreat from that fight and basically flee up here into flipping Russian territory. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's have a look over here at Antwerp. Let's actually just get a look at the army, see if I've decided what I want to do here. So, yeah, Flemish pikemen. Attack 9 with a charge bonus of 3, but don't worry about that because most of them are just going to be drawn up defensively. Defensive at 8. So they'll hit pretty hard and they'll get a bonus fighting cavalry. And of course, charging straight into their very long spears is a bad idea when they're drawn up. But, if I was to actually catch them on the walls... That would not be the worst thing in the world. Like, on the walls, my dismounted Huskarls can take care of them pretty nicely, all things considered. They've got crossbowmen, who hit pretty hard, missile attack of 9, and defense of 8, because these are proper crossbowmen, not militia varieties. So, yeah, they've actually got some proper defense on them, and even can actually defend themselves pretty effectively in a melee slugging match. So, don't underestimate those guys. Armoured sergeants, pretty bloody tough, just loads of defense, and some mailed knights on the ground, too. I can have this... But it's going to take a lot of flipping casualties to do it. And my archers are going to be of uh, limited to no use here. Oh, go on then. There's going to be some casualties here. But I think we can pull this off. Right, let's give this a go. All right. Decent sized town here. What we've got is, yeah, we can draw up any way around the north side. We've got a gate here. Let's see what else we've got going on. There's going to be more gates. But they're going to be... Come on, there's got to be more than one gate. Okay, there's another gate around there. But that one's... Uh, 
That's a difficult gate as well. It's kind of curved in, so if this tower activates, it'll be able to spit at you while these two towers do. But there's no one this side, which is good. Right, so probably what we want to do is, yeah, we just basically want to do a charge in to these gates. And we basically just want to see whichever one we can take out, that's going to be the one we just stick with. Uh, we'll just kind of remove round to that one if need be. So probably what we want to do is uh, this guy around here. Yeah, peasants on the ram. That works. So peasants on this ram right here. Peasants, of course, wearing their lovely padded armor. I do like the way armor shows up in this game. They're just going to try and open up that gate right there. Meanwhile, archers. Uh, actually, archers probably would not be the worst bet to actually push the ram. Just because archers are probably not that useful in this fight. But... Actually, no. Spear militia are even less useful. I'm going to move you away. Spear militia, come up here. You're just going to go straight at this gate. And then that's probably going to be enough. Like, if need be, I could just send basically, yeah. Like, just going with three ladders with flipping dismounted huskars and viking raiders would probably be enough for me to just take the walls. But I'd be worried by the amount of damage we might take from, say, crossbow and functors as we go up. And then potentially crossbowmen, say if they're around the corner here, continuing to fire at us. And the towers continuing to fire at us. I'm just going to actually take the comments advice. I'm going to just try bum rushing the gate. And we're going to see if we can actually make that actually work. So you, go over to that gate. The flipping flames are already in. This gate is unguarded. Spot on. They'll probably move something round to try and guard this gate in time. But this is not the worst thing in the world at all. Um, yeah, if that ram catches fire though... That will be a concern. So in comes, yeah, the flaming stuff onto the ram. There's totally just some um, basic crossbowmen around there as well. Interestingly, almost nothing's actually on the walls here. There's, yeah, there's one unit of Flemish pikemen claiming they're bracing. But I think they actually are because they're clearly not actually... Ah, and crossbowmen in front of them too. Yeah, they've actually not got that many troops up on the walls. I could probably... Actually take... Ah, but... Even the thing is, if I take the walls, as long as they're standing here, these towers will stay active. Then I'd need to come down off the walls. Then I'd need to be fighting in this rather awkward position where, yeah, I need to literally come down. They're drawn up. And then I say, yeah, you can see their formula little phalanx there. They'd be drawn up like that. I wouldn't be. And that ram is gone. That ram has gone. But it's done its job. Because now they're all running over here. <laughs> To try and basically stop these peasants. They've realised now. Because yeah, this is another thing about the AI. The town AI is way, way smarter than it used to be. Um, so basically, they've realised now the only way I'm getting into the city in terms of rams is by this gate. So all of a sudden, various units are now rushing round here to try and basically secure this gate. But by the time these towers activate, I'll basically already be here. So this gate's now guaranteed open. Plus, this is actually potentially going to work to my advantage because it's drawn off a fair amount of actual... Yeah, this is interesting. This is actually drawn off a fair amount of actual flipping infantry. I could theoretically just send some of my dismounted guys over to here. Double it up. Just get my nice dismounted husk guys up here. They'll be able to cut through these guys like crazy. Hmm, we'll see how much is drawn up defensively at this gate over here. Because I need to I need to beat them somewhere. You know what? It's not a bad idea. I'm just going to, in case I decide to do that, I'm going to get two units of dismounted Huskarls. Your Viking Raiders. You know what? Viking Raiders will be fine. Draw you guys up here and here. And get you guys more over in this sort of a direction. Sorry, by the way, Spear Militia. <laughs> you basically just marched straight to the wall, being shot all the way. And then you were shot on the way back as well. So sorry about that. Did not work out well for you. And then, what are you guys doing? There's... Hello? What's all this? Right, on the walls, they're moving. There's movement going on here. They've detected movement and they're trying to... Nope, I think, possibly, they're going to actually give... No, they're piling up onto the walls. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. They're piling up onto the walls over there. They're now going up top, which is kind of weird, because there's no way my peasants can push in against Flemish pikemen anyway. So, bum rushing this gate's not going to work. I kind of needed two gates open if I wanted to bum rush. So I probably need to fight here anyway. But those peasants standing at that front gate will basically just keep them occupied. <laughs> while I basically just kind of, yeah, move in. And these guys are crossing just... You know what? Screw it. I think we're just going to try and do this now. We're just going to go, you, go over here. You, go over here. I'm just going to take the walls. We're just going for the walls anyway. We're just going to go for it. That's going to keep them distracted. You guys go over here. You guys go over here. 
And in all fairness, like, in a straight scrap, my guys will be able to win this fight. So this will be fine. And uh, my guys here will keep this nice and, you know, just get close to the walls. If you guys just get close to the walls, you'll stop being shot. Okay? Just get over here. And I think you'll move out of the effective range. Right? Yes, there you are. Now, you just stand there. Stand there and just basically don't do anything. Marvellous. Now you just stay there and keep those guys busy while I actually bring up my own troops to the walls here. And yeah, I'd say my four ladders together with some really nice effective against infantry axemen with the effective against armour, sorry. They will do excellent job of hacking through these guys. Because when these guys can't brace properly, it's like taking on phalanxes on the wall. Which is when they're outside of their proper braced position, they're going to struggle slightly because they can't actually, you know, do their whole point right now. So, crossbowmen are right now, luckily they're marching, not firing. Works for me. Interestingly, armoured sergeants up there have kind of got themselves a bit distracted. They've run up here, and then as a result, they're now running back round the walls. <laughs> Having run up here, they're now kind of going back instead. Right, guys, 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 get it. Oh, blimey. You guys are- where- oh, wow. Okay, you guys have been torn to shreds by crossbowmen. You need to hurry it up. You really need to hurry it up. Guys, come on. Guys. Oh no, no, they're psychic, there we are, their psychic powers have, have failed them, everyone on, there you go, forward, forward, forward. Those guys have been shot to ribbons, but everyone else is doing alright, and these guys are, no one's attacked these guys. Obviously the guys who are most useless have basically taken no damage whatsoever, but as soon as they're up there, they should be fine, because Viking Raiders should be able to, in a straight fight, be able to take out Flemish Pikemen. So just get on here and start whacking these guys with your axes and then this should work out just fine. I mean, more importantly, it's the dismounted Huskars that should be able to do good work. So these guys should be able to do some excellent work just kind of hacking through these guys. And because these guys are being attacked by two at a time, they'll start losing strength very, very quickly. Yeah, look at that. 29, 28, 26, 24, 20. Yeah, now because they're losing strength so fast, they're actually, they'll probably break more than you'd expect. These guys are now coming up here and... Hmm... Concern, they're shaken. Right, I can't bring anything around this side gate because unfortunately... Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, unfortunately these guys have now no longer... They've stopped taking the bait. Right. I could just try and bum rush the plaza with the peasants just to basically draw some of them off. <laughs> that might work, but now instead the mailed knights have come around here. These guys are backing off in this direction. You are now... Yeah, you guys just basically need to take out these guys. You guys need to basically just take out these guys. The crossbowmen are taking a lot of damage. These guys are mysteriously... You know what? Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Just just go over this way and take these guys out, please. Because right now you're literally not doing anything. Guys, you need to... You need to get over here and help. Move. Right. Flemish pikemen over here, 85 and wavering. They will break very, very soon indeed. The Viking Raiders doing a good job on clearing up these guys. They are losing a lot of strength very, very quickly. These guys are... Ah! Units getting stuck on walls seem to happen more in Medieval 2 than it did in Rome. I need you to start running. Which was unfortunate because you don't want to get stuck on walls in flipping Medieval 2. Because you will be flipping murders. So I just need to get these guys to basically do anything to move. There we are. Now they're willing to move. They're willing to move down here in order to beat up these guys. Lovely. And beautiful. Right. So they're coming over. That is not helpful. Okay, these guys are actually now coming up here. Right. Walls belong to us, supposedly. Don't believe that for one minute because it's pretty clear that uh, the towers are still firing on us, but whatever. These guys are wavering. I think something over there has... Uh, have you broken? No, you've not broken yet. I don't believe the walls belong to us, okay? Not one flipping moment. I think we're flipping losing. Yeah, we've managed to keep one unit of armoured sergeants and one unit of mailed knights busy over here. But other than that... Things not looking so hot. We need, look at this, like crossbowmen, 25, not yet flipping broken. These guys, down to 55, not yet broken. We've managed to capture and then lose the walls, possibly because these guys are now piling up again. But these guys, my guys will stand and fight too, which is good. These guys down to 27, at least will do a good job clearing out these lads. Go over here. These guys are, hang on, something's... Something was routing, and it's hopefully not me, right? Is it not me? No, I don't think it's me. Good. I saw routing for a second there. That's crossbowmen who are routing. They're routing onto the wall. That's intriguing. Right, you know what? Guys, guys, guys. I think we got this. There's breaking going on all over the shop. Now just pile in the reinforcements. Pile in the reinforcements. That towel will go off in a second because they're abandoning it. So you guys just pile through here. Lovely. And now... Oh, no. One of mine's broken. 
Those dismantled Huskars are broken. These guys are wavering as well. But we've got fresh Viking Raiders coming in over here. Guys, come on. I need you to get over here and reinforce. Oh, come on. Right. So my guys are now fleeing over towards the ladders. That's fine. These guys are coming over here to reinforce these guys. They're shaken, not yet wavering. These Flemish pikemen are almost screwed. These guys are in trouble. These gates are still belonging to the rebels, not to me. This is flipping close. Get over here. Just take these guys out. Wavering. Come on. Actually, you know what? I need more strength. Guys, get up here. Up these ladders, please. Up these ladders. And we still have over there. <laughs> Holding something in place over this side, the cavalry, and actually several units can't get involved because they're basically guarding against the possibility the peasants will do anything, which is marvellous. So, we might just, just win the... Yep, that's wavering. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bring in more strength, damn it. Bring in some more flipping strength. Wavering. Come on. Push forward. Push forward. We just need to... We can't get them surrounded, unfortunately, because the only thing that was actually... All the units that came up here have now pushed actually through over to here and then been surrounded themselves. And that's another unit wavering. And one, one of mine's broken, damn it. But you should be able to take this. You should be able to take this. And then as soon as we actually can just get these guys up the ladders, we should be able to take the gateway. Then I can get in some proper heavy cavalry of my own. And at this point, that's our crossbowmen are now firing up onto the walls. That's just not flipping fair, you bastards. Right, you, get over here. Come on, come on, come on. There we are. I think we've actually got ourselves the gates now. I think we hold the gates. Guys, get over here. Just get over here. And now I need to get my flipping cavalry in here. If my king responds, then we will own... I think we own the gates. Do we own the gates or are you... No, I think he's going around this way. We need to go on... T seize the gate. No, this way. Someone seize the gates, please. Thank you. There we go, we've got the gates captured, and that means you crossmen over there, who have been bugging me. At this point, my king's coming in, and he is not amused, alright? He does not like what you've been doing. Now we can mop up these bastards. Now what's even left? It is one unit of mailed knights, it is uh, some damaged Flemish pikemen that fled from the walls, and one proper unit. Now we can just basically send my guy in over here. He's already wavering, lovely. So we just get over here. Now, keep an eye on the king. Because we can know what he's doing, so we can literally check how blooded he is and where he is. So, those guys have already broken. These guys will break momentarily, and the king is nice and safe at the back right now. So, yeah, heavy cavalry can easily take out these lads, which is perfect. And now we need to basically just get some strength in around here. What's over on this side right now? Nothing's over here. They've abandoned that gate. That means it's now safe for me to basically bring my troops down here and also i want to bring everything else as well just basically bring everything up including forming a nice little defensive area for my archers because now finally my archers can do their job that was close flipping look at that just how flipping tough it is to win these flipping fights now you back off i'm not having you charging into uh, anything else right and i think we've managed to we might have just baited the mailed knights forward that works for me if the mailed knights want to charge forward I'm willing to basically lead them over into my troops. Because I've now got some flipping spearmen. Nope. Not yet. Fine. Crossbowmen won't be able to do too much, to be honest. I'm just going to back way over here until my own archers are in position. But for the time being, we're safe. Right. Get my guy over here. Then just basically, yeah, form a nice defensive line around here. Just to make sure nothing else bad goes on here. We've got 60, 150. What's even flipping left that's in any way tough? This will do. These units are just going to have to do as basically my, my front line. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it'll do. Right, now get my guys. You know what? The crossbowmen are coming back over here. Send my king around to clean them up again. I think we've mopped up one unit entirely. Now we can just go and mop up the other. Because they're already flipping wavering. Because they're all on their own. And now they can see that they're at a massive numerical disadvantage. In fact, they've already broken. They've already broken. That's fine. So I may or may not be able to ride them down. Heavy cavalry might be sufficiently slow. I can't even get to them. So... Uh, we shall see. I think we might, yeah, we might be able to pick off a few of them at least. Enough that it's worth me charging forward, and I doubt because their only cavalry is mailed knights as well. Should be able to do much. Get in there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, bloody. No, you bastards. All right, fine. You know what? Never mind. We'll catch them later. Right, let's just start bringing the infantry and the archers up here. Bring you guys up. You can fire at will. Skirmish mode is off. Send my guys around the edge here. These guys will probably break almost immediately. Let's just bring my cavalry around here just in case. Archers, you in position. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you want to. Are they 
Are you actually charging? Nope, nope, you've broken. Lovely. Well, in this case, archers, we should just like to shoot them in the back for a bit, please. Lovely. I think everyone's close enough to in position on you too. Guys, fire at will. Lovely. And it looks like my archers might just have, yep, yeah, a shot at some of the troops on the plaza. It'll probably just be some light stuff. It'll be enough to bait them off the plaza and actually into my prepared spearmen. I mean, when I say prepared spearmen, I mean flipping spear militia, which is not that great. But if that's going to happen, you guys form up into the skiltrum. So there you go. Form up into your skiltrum. So that will make you much more effective at dealing with cavalry. And as soon as that happens, yep, yeah, if they decide they want to charge forward... Guys, stop running. Just just start firing at this point. Archers, fire into these guys. There's 80 of them. Uh, but basic mailed knights versus a Skiltrum. Even if they win, they'll take a lot of damage. Now, interestingly, armoured sergeants are running off in this direction. Which is intriguing. I'm not sure what they're planning to do here. Mailed knights already down to 68 because they're just being shot. And yeah, I think they don't want to charge into the Skiltrum. Uh, for understandable reasons, but luckily we are now wearing those guys down pretty bloody quickly. Keep an eye on those armoured sergeants. I don't know where they're going and what they're planning, but it concerns me. They may be planning a really complicated flank. Because the battle AI in Medieval 2 is a huge step up from the battle AI in flipping uh, Rome Total War. Down to 49, lovely. They've kind of lost their opportunity. Like, if they'd done a big charge, maybe they could have just broken the spear militia in one go. But now, now no. And now those guys are running down there. What do you guys want? Also, why have I not brought up my mercenary spearmen? That's like one of the best units I've got left. And they're not even doing anything right now. So, uh, all right, fine. Oh, oh, the poor red. Oh, the poor dead huskarls. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I knew this flipping fight would be a bloody slaughter. Right. So these guys just running around here. Are they actually planning to like run outside and take on my peasants? If they are, that's fine. I didn't really care so much about those peasants anyway, to be honest. Uh, you guys are apparently fighting. Hello. Right. Got a couple of horses coming in here. You guys, uh, fall back a little bit here. Let them come into the Skiltrum. Just, yeah, fall back to about here-ish. There we are. So now, now they're going to get, yeah, you see, look at that. They're just going to get caught up in the Skiltrum over and over and over again. Anyone that comes up to the Skiltrum is being basically torn apart. So they're already down to flipping 14. All of my archers should now basically be concentrating their fire, yep, yeah, on the Flemish pikemen. So just shoot them for a bit. And they're down to 128, 127, 126. Lovely. This is all good, good damage. They're running forward right now. Uh, the Meld Knights are as good as dead, including their leader. Marvellous. And that means they have... They... Ooh, ooh, no, 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 no. They're going for my king. Or not my king, sorry. They're just going for Sven of Milton Keynes. Right, get him out of there. Get him out of there. And if they're going to... They're already wavering. Nice, I like this. Now your king's dead. You're in trouble, aren't you? Oh, dear. This isn't looking so hot for you. And now we can just basically shoot them in the side and they're going to start collapsing very quickly. Right, so they've given up on that plan. No, they haven't, have they? They don't know what they want to do. Marvellous. Now we can just pick them apart. Yes, indeed, the peasants are fighting. <laughs> the peasants are fighting over by this gate, but it's uh, it's not going to work out well for them, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, they're going to take a few knocks. But you know what? They will do some... The armoured sergeants are actually wavering. Armoured sergeants versus peasants. The peasants are shaken but fresh. The armoured sergeants are wavering. That's weird, but alright. Apparently the armoured sergeants don't feel up for dealing with peasants right now. That killing of their leader has done some nasty, nasty work to them. And now, now my archers can just pick these apart as they flee. Now it's collapsing. That was, that was a tough battle. Like, how much of my own force have I lost? Like, it's probably a huge part. Like, 43% of my army dead. Most of my flipping infantry. Most of what's left is probably my flipping archers. And because the archers had no way of going up onto the walls, that was so close to a flipping loss. That was really dangerously close to a loss. Oh my goodness, it's actually happened. The armoured sergeants have pulled out because they couldn't take on the peasants. That's... You guys deserve a promotion. I'm making all of you honorary huskarls. Every single last one of you. You stood up with pitchforks while wearing flipping leather to armoured sergeants and you drove them back. That's amazing. Right, time to push forward here. My mercenary spearmen are going up front just in case the horses try and get one. Oh, there's only four of them left. That's fine. The only thing we need to take out now is, yeah, the remaining 45 Flemish pikemen and 100 strength of you guys. Okay, when we take this town, we're putting up a special plaque, like on this big building in the town plaza, saying that you guys were absolutely hopeless, that the actual kind of native defenders of this town here in Antwerp, you said armoured sergeants against peasants, and they lost. Okay, that's ridiculous. 
Right, archers, target the armoured sergeants, let's just lure them forward, that's all I'm really worried about at this point. And one of you can actually take out the crossbowmen, because they're still just vaguely annoying me a bit by firing the odd thing. That's fine, we'll get some arrows coming in on them too. And here we are, looks like the Flemish pipemen are running forward, they've taken the odd knock. You guys are down to 99, 98, they, oh, you may be going to go and give another go to the flipping peasants. And watch out for them, they've got flipping pitchforks, alright? Watch out! Right, the archers just aren't doing anything to crossbow because they don't have the right line of tits. So I'm just going to tell these guys instead to focus on... Uh, yeah, there's 43 Flemish pikemen here. I think you've probably got a decent shot at them. Just take that shot. I think some of you have got a decent shot there. I mean, really, I should probably approach from this angle. My archers would have a way better line from this angle. Right, speed things up a little bit here. Quite frankly, we're almost out of arrows at this point, so we will need to go and take care of this kind of, you know, hands to hand to finish it off. But that's fine. I've still got, well, say that's fine. I think I've got enough. Right, you guys, go in here. We've got Viking Raiders to back you up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to send, I'm not going to send you guys in just yet. I'm going to keep you guys back. I'm going to send in the Viking Raiders first, whose job it is to take out the crossbowmen. Because actually, we, we do have one small problem here, which is we've got. 88 armoured sergeants here. How are we going to take them out? Like, my mercenary spearmen are about as strong as them, but we've also got these flipping pikemen who've still got some strength, and if I actually hit them dead on... Ooh, this isn't quite as over as I was hoping it was, actually. Right, get my own spearmen in as well. Strength in numbers here, and then you guys round the bag. If we're just in big numbers here, we should be all right. And then we've got we've got 45 dismounted huskars. You know what, you guys... Get in there as well. Everyone in. And you know what? Peasants, you're on this too. <laughs> I can't afford not to have the peasants involved. You can quite frankly take part in a flanking manoeuvre. You'll be flipping useful. Right. Viking raiders up front can take out the crossbowmen and make sure they can't do anything else here. Crossbowmen down to the last one. Everyone just finish him off, please. Go on, stab him. Stab him with an axe. And is he dead? Yep, yeah, he's dead. That's him taken care of. They will cease to exist. So you guys, I would say... Run a little bit more this way if you can, and then loop round into these guys. Uh, if you can, yeah, over to there. You guys, into here. Just get around the back of them, and then you guys into here. And now we've got armoured sergeants who are supposedly wavering. Peasants, get in there. <laughs> Finish them off. You've got them on the ropes. I'm literally sending peasants charging in. <laughs> this is marvellous, but you know what? Fine, go for it. They've already got one win under their belt here. Right, where are my huskars? They're kind of stuck at the back for the time being. I think these guys are stuck outside of their thing right now, so we should be doing all right. It's down to 85% killed. In come the peasants! In you come! Go on, lads! Get them! Get them! Oh, guys, I feel like I feel like it's not going so well this time. Tragically. <laughs> Tragic. I think they've done some good work, actually. They've done a little bit. I may as well just kind of bring them out and then charge them straight back in again. I mean, I think these get like a charge bonus of one. But, you know, a charge bonus of one is still a charge bonus. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, right, what's left over there? That's 18 wavering. But we need to basically kill these guys to the last man. And I can't use my heavy cavalry because every single one of these guys is flipping spearmen, damn it. You guys still at 42. They are holding. They're holding and they're doing okay. They're actually like, you know, getting the odd hit in. Well done. Right, over here we've just got, yeah, 14 Flemish pikemen still to go. I feel like actually my 45 dismounted Huskars should be able to handle this on their own. So I'd like them to push through to the armoured sergeants if they can. Reinforce these hero peasants, damn it. Push through. Just get through here. That's, yeah, 53 armoured sergeants. That's just three Flemish pikemen remaining over there. Come on, guys. My basic crappy spear militia, you're terrible, but you can handle this. I believe in you, probably. Well, I don't really believe in you, to be honest. But, you know, you'll you'll very slowly wear them down with massive casualties. But that's okay. That's all I want from you today. Actually, the peasants seem to have ended up fighting these Flemish pikemen over here. <laughs> so, Flemish pikemen, you just took one down. Well done. Go on. Go on, this guy. Get him. Get him with your pointy stick. Get in there. Get in there. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're just kind of vaguely gesturing at each other. That's right. That was a terrible swing. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, he's presented his back to you. You had an opportunity there. Then you you stabbed in the wrong direction. Come on. Come on. This is this is a battle for the ages right here. No! 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 Is he alright? He's okay for now. No, he's not okay. He's not okay. No, he's 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 no no no. Is he is he dead? He's I think he's not doing so hot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Right, get revenge. Avenge your friends. 
Right, guys, everyone, just charge forward, encircle the armoured sergeants, finish them off nice and quick. Round here, round here, round here. Come on, lads, in we come. Round the outside and into the back of you. Nice, and in come the spear militia. Vastly, vastly inferior troops, but they'll do the job. It's down to 10 peasants versus 9 Flemish pikemen on this side of the battle. I think over there we're winning. We're just slowly grinding them down. But over here, this is where I care. Oh, 9. 9 peasants versus... Oh, 6. 6. Come on, peasants. You can do this. I believe in you. Stab him. Get... Oh, you got to hit in. You got another hit in. You almost done. Come on, just keep stabbing him. He's, he's clearly on the ropes. You've got him. Come on, you two. Work together. No, save your... Oh, oh, he's bloodied. He's bloodied. Come on. Come on, you two. Just keep stabbing him with your, with your things over there. Down to, yep, nine. Eight versus six. Oh, come on. Come on, guys. No, you know what? I'm probably going to send in reinforcements. <laughs> Give it, I think everyone else has won. So, you know what? Peasants, you have done marvellously well. Well done. Down to, you're down to four. They actually got a few kills in. These peasants have, like, they haven't broken this whole match. They got the only breach in the gate. They stood up to the armoured sergeants. They stood up to the towers. They charged and took on the armoured sergeants a second time. And they won a second time. And then at the end, they broke. Guys, you ruined it. I'm taking the position of honorary Huskarl off you. Because you just ruined it at the end by breaking. Bloody hell. Oh, men lost 600, blimey. Right, well, on the plus side, hopefully we'll have got, yeah, the Spear Militia, we've got a whole bunch of casualties healed. That's the guys who were damaged when we were approaching the wall with the ram that caught fire, because obviously you get a lot of those guys back. But other than that, not many casualties healed, because most of them were killed in brutal, brutal combat there. <laughs> on the plus side, we have Antwerp, albeit at such great cost, we cannot go on straight to Bruges. Not a chance. That is, that was a fun battle. Like, battles are so much harder for towns in Medieval 2 Total War, and it's beautiful for it. I love it. Now, occupy the settlement, of course, is what we want to do here. We could get 2,000 florins for sacking it, but no. Occupied, let's get it working as a military centre as soon as possible. And the population is, uh, yeah, a little bit over 2,000. So not huge, but occupy it. In we go, and you are up to, yes indeed, one chivalry. Lovely. You are a wall taker, you are fair in rule, you've got a pagan magician, which is never mind, but the growth rate will be a little bit higher, and you can now start working on, yes indeed, getting Antwerp here up to being lovely and good. You know, I was planning to rename this place something like Peasantville, or something, in honour of, or just Peasanton, Peasantville sounds a bit small. I was going to call it something in honour of those peasants, but they ruined it. They ruined it at the end there by running away, and that's their fault. That is their fault, and as a result, I'm not going to honour them anymore. You guys, you almost had a town named after you, decided, oh come on, they did good work. Am I willing to, o yeah, you know what, I'm willing to overlook it. I'm willing to overlook it. Welcome to the town of Peasantville. Yeah, I've decided it is going to be Peasantville. I like Peasantville. So it's going to be Peasantville. This is our new city. I'm sorry if you actually live in Antwerp and we've just renamed your city. But you know what? This town, this town shall be named in honour of the greatest heroes who ever lived. Who kind of, you know, slightly fluffed. Oh no! Oh, that's a disaster. <laughs> Two of the units were so badly damaged of flipping dismounted Huskars. They've ceased to flipping exist. Right. That's a concern. Uh, okay. We need to, you know, we just need roads. Get roads going on here. Repair the mercenary spearmen. <laughs> and we can't do anything else here. Right. We need to figure out what we're going to do here. Because, yeah, aside from the archers who are in good shape, everything else probably needs to just be flipping escorted home by Admiral John. We need to take it back to Hamburg so we can actually retrain it. Because a large part of our army is, yeah, now in a lot of trouble. This is, this is not going well for us. Let's also just move... You down to... Can you get uh, exactly there? Yeah. Exactly there. Watchtower. And we've got... We can't quite see Paris, damn it. But we can at least see what's going on in France now. Lovely. We now share a land border with France. I feel like that's going to end badly. But equally, I feel like potentially, if we decide to be friends with Germany, that could actually work out too. Denmark and Germany. Because I think, yeah, right now, we are the number one in terms of... I can go to the list scrolls here. Yeah, in military ranking, me and the Imperials are currently the top two factions in the world. If we ally together with, I'm pretty sure that's Poland right there. Hang on. Uh, just turn Poland on and off there. Yeah, that's Poland. Poland is, I think, the fourth strongest military faction in the world. It's only the Byzantines who are in third. Interrupting that. Me, Imperials, and Poland together, that is a ridiculously strong force. Then, if anyone ever did start causing trouble, like Milan, because Milan are dicks and eventually will start causing trouble, because they're just really being determined to cause war in Europe, that could work out very, very nicely indeed. Intriguing. 
You know, ladies and gentlemen, with Peasantville under our command, I think that is more than enough for now. The Danish Empire at this point looking very, very nice indeed, I would say. And next time, of course, the First Crusade comes to its end as we will send our massive army against Cairo where... Well, if you thought that fight was big, yeah. Cairo is going to be our first fight taking on... Well, not even stone walls. Large stone walls? Oh dear. Right, large stone walls, iron gates, extra wall defences, and a decent garrison here as well, yeah. We'll need to see how we take care of that, because that is going to be one hell of a big difficult fight coming up, because uh, that fight in Antwerp, that very nearly ended in total flipping disaster. I thought we were going to flipping lose that one for a while there. So, we'll have to see how we deal with Cairo next time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John, this has been many a true nerd, and this has been Medieval 2, Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. No, John. <laughs> oh, he likes that. <laughs> the Romans touched me. <laughs>